our NFL Scouting Combine 2024 recap. We'll start with day one, getting right into it. It's our top performers and who we believe are at least were the top performers. Well, they were because of the different events here. Obviously, this is not based on pure opinion. It's based on how they did in certain aspects of drills, etc. So Brandon Feisk is the first player we're going to talk about. The interior defensive lineman out of Florida State, six foot four, two 292 pounds. Obviously, now all these height and weights get confirmed at the combine, which is a big deal because, you know, maybe uh, maybe some schools when they do that kind of round up a little bit, a couple inches here and there for the height or for the weight, lower it or, you know, make it higher depending on the position that that player is in. But we get the actual official NFL results now. Uh, out of the defensive lineman, Feist finished with the fastest 40-yard dash, the best vertical jump, and the best broad jump, almost 10 feet in the broad jump, or is that 10? No, 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 yeah, 10 feet in the broad jump. Vertical Four, jump. 7, 8, 40 was crazy, too, for a, D, for a guy his size. Absolutely insane. Uh, he had a 33 and a half vertical jump as well, which is pretty impressive. And then his 10 yard split just came third, uh, or came just third, I guess you could say. I don't know how you want to phrase that, but it's still within the top of the interior defensive lineman at 1.68. So yeah, obviously super good in the speed and the power metrics at the draft. Um, obviously, there's different things that the the NFL Combine doesn't accomplish, and that is how good they are at actually playing the game. <laughs> so, you know, these are all the skill, you know, type of issues or, or positions that they kind of test, and that is speed and strength. Obviously, you know, you can test – bench press but how many reps does a guy bench is not going to really equate to how they can use their moves to break past offensive linemen so again take all of these with a grain of salt how much does it matter i actually was watching part of the interruption the other day alex uh or it was either part of the interruption or around the horn one of the espn shows and they were talking about a guy that we're going to talk about a little bit later because that 40 yard dash combine record was taken uh this year at the nfl combine and the anchors on the show were talking about it. And, you know, the question was, does that even matter? Like, is that really going to make a difference at the end of the day? Does him breaking the 40 yard dash, you know, combine record matter. And in the grand scheme of things, it's probably yes for him because he might raise up draft boards because of that. His name will get talked about more by scouts. Maybe some people who didn't know him, they now know him because his clip went viral from breaking the record. But besides that, does that show that he's better than another wide receiver? I mean, I don't know. I guess it shows that he's faster. But anyway, sure. so Feisk is our number one player at draft day or draft day, scouting combine day one. Yeah. Second player we're going to talk about. We're moving to the edge right now uh, with Dallas Turner out of Alabama, 6'3, 247 pounds. Uh, he ran a 447 uh, 40, which was the first at his position group, a 154 uh, for a 10 yard split, a 40 and a half. Um, inch vertical first in his group and a 10 foot seven inch broad jump which was second in his group um obviously dallas turner already projected to be a, a very high pick uh in this year's draft uh he showed you know a lot of you know physical tools with his testing that are going to reflect well uh the vertical the broad jump uh which really kind of emphasizes his athleticism um, he, you know, it's funny. I saw a comparison actually online. I just wanted to bring this up. His physical traits, his testing, very similar to Hassan Reddick, who obviously is tearing it up in the NFL right now, 10 plus sacks every single season. So, um, a, a player that's very versatile like Hassan Reddick as well. Uh, I think when we get to the edge rusher position, which I don't know when that's going to be for us scouting wise. Um, but I, I think a very interesting position for the giants, maybe something that they address in free agency more than the draft. But if they do address it in the draft, uh, Dallas Turner uh, is certainly a very, very good player. Um, and this edge group really showed out at the combine, Josh. Speaking of the edge group, Alex, I'll let you continue with Chop Robinson. I know before the show, you wanted to break up the order a little bit to talk about him. Yeah, I mean, Chop Robinson, I don't know. I saw someone, um, you know, talking about this. There's another guy from Penn State, maybe two guys from Penn State we're going to talk about later as well. Um, but Penn State just keeps bringing up these athletic freaks in the combine um, that just keep going crazy and crazy, but they can't have any success uh, in the Big Ten at all. They can't beat Ohio State. They can't beat Michigan. They can't beat anyone, um, and they're just not very good as of late. 
yet they have all these talented players. Um, so for you Penn State fans out there, please let me know what's going on because every year there's these great Penn State players coming out um, and they just can't seem to do anything. So interesting. But anyway, Chop Robinson, 6'3", 254, so a little bit undersized for the edge rusher spot. Um, but because of that, he can test really, really well. 40-yard dash, 449, uh, which was first in his group, uh, 154 10-yard uh, split, which was first. 34 and a half inch vertical, which was his weakest score at 12th, uh, and his broad jump 10 foot eight inches tied for first. Um, he was the leader in the 40 yard dash, 10 yard split. Uh, he's really explosive, uh, especially initially off the line, which obviously you get from that 10 yard split. Um, his vertical uh, obviously was a little bit low, which I guess um, I think from edge rusher kind of communicates that you probably want a little bit more lower body explosiveness, um, but obviously his 40 and 10 yard split kind of, uh, I guess, make up for that. Not poor performance, but more average performance. But yeah, he looked really, really quick. Um, it, even when he was running, if you saw the clips, Josh, he just looked so much quicker than even a 449. So uh, a really, really exciting player. Um, kind of interested to see where he ends up going. A lot of ranging opinions about where he could possibly fall in the draft. So I think he didn't do anything to hurt himself, and he definitely helped himself at the combine. All right, more Big Ten talk to come in day two, but we're still in day one with one more player. And for that one, we head to the ACC. Peyton Wilson, linebacker out of NC State, six foot four, two 233 pounds, the one and only linebacker we have in this conversation. Although, you know, edge and linebacker, they kind of rotate, but the only – position linebacker uh, wise on our list well he led the linebackers with a 4.44 40 yard dash blazing speed by wilson a 1.54 10 yard split that was tied for the first among linebackers and then his broad jump nine feet 11 inches and then 34 and a half vertical that is both within the top 10 for linebackers so obviously the standout speed of 4.44 seconds is absolutely unbelievable, especially with his 10-yard split, too. So moving from sideline to sideline, chasing down running backs out of the backfield, you know, whether they're doing an inside zone or an outside zone, that's going to be something that's going to be really good against the running backs. And then obviously, with that speed, that means that not always linebackers can keep in touch or, you know, play alongside these blazing fast tight ends that are coming out of the draft now or in the NFL as of now or wide receivers even. Uh, as well so Wilson seems like from those speed charts again we don't really know how that converts to on the field action during games but it seems like he is pretty fast so his athleticism is there and well suited for a good uh well um sorry a good defensive scheme especially someone like you know a guy as Giants fans even though like Wink Martindale he'd be perfect for blitzing and rushing in onto the quarterback and surprising them with an attack uh like a blind side Sort of sack. All right, that's enough for me. Alex, day two, go to Max Melton. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to mention, before we move on to day two, I feel like we could talk about so many players. This is probably one of the best uh, combines in terms of guys who just exceeded expectations. So many high-quality players to talk about, but we're just limiting it to a few for each day. Uh, otherwise, we'll be here all day talking about it. So I uh, just wanted to point that out. So if anyone says, let's, uh, you let's clarify. This player? Let's clarify. Yeah. Alex. We'll be here all day talking about the players. Okay, fair enough. But all I'll say is if your favorite player who you saw and you were like, why didn't they include him? He's He had a crazy combine. He was fantastic, especially when we get to day three with the wide receivers. I mean, I, I could put 10 wide receivers up there. There were so many great performances. But um, So just keep that in mind uh, and don't yell at us. Anyway, uh, moving on to day two here uh, with the DBs and tight ends. We're going to start with a local guy, Josh. Max Melton out of Rutgers, cornerback, 5'11", 187 pounds, probably a slot guy um, from what I've seen uh, in terms of his scouting, his projections, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe he has the size to play on the outside, but his 40-yard dash was a 4-3-9, which placed him sixth among uh, among corners. 10-yard split was a 1-5-1, which was ninth, 40-and-a-half-inch vertical, fourth, uh, and his first uh, among cornerbacks, broad jump at 11 foot 4 inches. Um, he was really, really uh, a constant improver at Rutgers. 
Um, he can play both the inside and outside at Rutgers. Obviously projects more as an inside in the NFL. Um, his broad jump and his 40-yard dash, uh, really obviously important uh, for the cornerback position, really shows his explosiveness as an athlete, um, you know, size, burst, um, you know, it really should make him an uh, ideal candidate, uh, you know, to be drafted somewhat early in this year's draft. Uh, maybe one of the earliest Rutgers players to come out in quite a few years. Obviously, we had Isaiah Pacheco. He's turning out pretty good. Um, we had Bo Melton a couple years back. Or that was last year, actually, Josh. So um, who knows? Maybe Max Melton uh, related to Bo Melton. I got to check on that, actually. I'm interested. Um, I think he could be someone who maybe breaks the mold uh, of uh, you know an earlier-ish Rutgers pick because we haven't had that in quite a bit. And obviously, don't go to Rutgers. Neither of us do, but... As the local state school, I guess we always kind of root for them, right, Josh? Yeah, well, they're not really ever well, good, but... Yeah, so it's more like you feel bad for them and you just want them to do well, you know? I guess we'll go with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking right now about your little uh, Bo Melon. I just um, realized that as I was talking, I was like, wait a second. I doubt Correct, correct. Max Melon. Yep, that's his younger brother. Oh, interesting. All right. Well, we'll see if he goes higher or lower than his brother in the draft. And we I go from was sixth or seventh round. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we had him mock to the Giants a couple of times just for kind of for fun. Um, Alex, we go from one side of the country to the other. We head to Utah. Cole Bishop, safety, six foot two, two hundred six pounds. Um, well, we could talk about safeties all day too because we both love that position. It was actually something again. I I'm not going to tease it all the time, but our interview with Justin Panic, we talked about what his favorite positions are, and he was talking about he really likes to see these cornerbacks and safeties in the defensive end because the speed really shows, and that's what happened with Cole Bishop, a four four five forty third among safeties, a one point five two ten yard split. That was fifth among safeties, and then thirty nine inch vertical jump. And then 10 foot four broad jump, both top 10 among the safeties. So it aligns well with the scouting report. Uh, his 40 yard dash uh, combine result does, you know, his tackling ability, his, his physicality, his essential traits for being a faster and quick quarterback that's able to stop, uh, you know, run defense effectively. Um, and his vertical bar broad jump just shows that he has lower body strength um, and besides that, and that's all I have for, for Bishop. Alex, you ready for the next player? Yeah, we got two safeties on this portion of, uh, what is it here? Day two. So, um, interesting. I know not a lot of people are talking about the safety group. I think they're sneaky good this year. Um, but you know, we'll have to wait and see where they end up going. But, um, Jalen Simpson out of Auburn, six foot one seventy nine. Um, he also ran a four, four, five which was fifth among safeties, or he was tied third, I guess, actually. But he, I guess they, is it by the milliseconds or something that they placed them? I don't know how they do it exactly, but he was fifth. Um, one, five, one, 10 yard split, fourth, um, vertical jump, 39 and a half, which was third. And then broad jump, 11 foot, one inch, which was second. His speed in the 40, uh, his explosiveness in the uh, vertical and broad jumps, Definitely just confirmed that he was going to be a really athletic safety coming out of college, which you uh, could see from his scouting report from his tape at Auburn. Um, a little bit undersized, of course, at 179, six foot, uh, but someone who, you know, if they could bulk up a little bit, could be a very, very impactful safety for a team uh, later in this year's draft. And our next player on the list is the one tight end we included in this um Little draft scouting combine recap, I should say. Theo Johnson, a tight end out of Penn State. Alex mentioning the Penn State guys on this list. Here's another one. He's a tank. Six foot six, 259 pounds. Uh, his um, 4.57 40 yard dash. These tight ends have blazing speed now. Second amongst the tight end group, 1.55 second uh, 10 yard split. That was third among tight ends. 10 foot five inch broad jump. Second amongst tight ends, and then 39 and a half inch uh, vertical jump, which is second amongst tight ends. His combine performance, particularly his remarkable results in speed and jumping events, underscores his physical traits, aligns with his anticipated potential. And we move from day two to day three the running backs, wide receivers, probably what everyone is waiting for. And Alex will start us off with that. 
Yeah, starting with a guy that I don't think anyone expected to test this well, Isaac Rendo uh, out of Louisville, six foot, 221 pounds. Remember that weight, height, and weight when I'm talking about these, um, you know, combine data here. For his 40 yard dash, he ran a 4 3 3 first around running backs, uh, 10 yard split, 1 5 5, a 13th run uh, among running backs, which is interesting. I'll talk about that in a second. 41 and a half inch vertical, first among running backs, broad jump. 10 foot, nine inches, second among running backs. Um, so if you kind of look at his tape, everyone kind of sees him more as a power back, um, someone who could really uh, break, you know, kind of operate between the tackles. Um, but he has such elite speed, uh, which you can see from the combine, but not exactly, you know, initial burst, uh, which you see from the 10 yard split, which was ranked 13th. But once he gets going, no one is catching him uh, at that 433 mark 40. Um, so he's a really, really interesting player. Obviously shows a lot of lower body strength uh, with the broad, uh, vertical and broad jump, which obviously is reminiscent of a power back, someone who could really break tackles. Uh, but yeah, his performance, it was probably one of the most interesting we've seen at the combine in many years because it was such a big surprise uh, that he was going to run that quick um, and, and kind of operate like that. It really shows that he could be kind of a either a power back someone who could run between the tackles, break tackles, and also a guy who could kind of give you uh, that big home run as well, big home run play. Wow, well, because you talk about players not being able to catch up to someone. It's this guy right now, Xavier Worthy, the wide receiver out of Texas who made the masses watch. Five foot 11 inches, 165 pounds, so a tiny uh, and very thin wide receiver. But with that, he breaks the 40-yard dash combine record. 421, which is first among wide receivers, obviously ran the fastest in NFL history, beating out John Ross, who previous held, previously held the record. Obviously, that was always pinned to his name when you would see John Ross in NFL news. Obviously, not a very successful NFL wide receiver, but whenever a team would sign him, be like, well, he broke the 40-yard dash record, so he's pretty fast. Um, this achievement for Worthy is hopefully going to you know, help him climb up draft boards. But again, how much does it really equate to how good he is on the field. That's something that you have to think about. However, it's not just a 40 yard dash where he excelled at the vertical jump. 41 inches was second among wide receivers, 10 foot, 11 broad jump was fifth among wide receivers. So obviously the four main uh, types of um, drills, excuse me, that they had at the combine, he excelled at. he finished within the top five at, and then obviously, I mean, Breaking the 40-yard dash record is pretty unbelievable. 4.21 seconds is crazy. And he knew right when it happened because he just kept running right into the end zone. So congrats to Worthy for the combine record. Obviously, it gets people like us talking about him. So he did pretty good. Yeah, and now moving on to another Texas Longhorn here, Inadani Mitchell, 6'2", 205. Again, remember the height and weight. He ran a 4'3", 4'40" which was second among wide receivers uh, at that height and weight, which is crazy. One, five, two, 10 yard split, which was eighth the vertical jump third uh, at 39 and a half and 11 foot four broad jump, which was first among wide receivers. He has remarkable athleticism for his side size, especially speed. Uh, he's a really big uh, contested catch guy as well, which you can see with his leaping ability with the vertical jump with the broad jump. Uh, so he could be kind of a guy, uh, a run after catch guy with his speed. Uh, he could beat you over the top. He could do contested catches. Uh, Donnie Mitchell, really, really exciting prospect. Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU also had an excellent day. Also ran, I believe, a 4 3 4 40. Also a huge, a uh, really big guy who really showed his athletic prowess. So a uh, shout out to him. He kind of just missed out on this list, but I couldn't include three wide receivers in a day uh, that had wide receivers, running backs, and QBs. So we did unfortunately have to, you know, add a QB and it's kind of a guy everyone's talking about. So I wanted to add him on the list. And that is JJ McCarthy, the quarterback out of Michigan, six foot two and a half, uh, 219 pounds. And here's the thing, Alex, when we talk about quarterbacks who is rising on draft boards, even before the scouting combine, it's been JJ McCarthy, especially linked with the New York Giants at six, which leaves Giants fans super scared because this is a player that was looking in the second, maybe early third, but mostly second round in the draft. And you're telling me he's going to climb all the way up to six if the Giants like him that much. However, maybe this will change because he didn't practice in any athletic drills. 
When he did throw, though, it was not good. Made some impressive deep ball throws towards the end of the drills, but um, I, I I don't know because here's the thing. J.J. McCarthy, to not participate in the athletic drills, I understand that, you know, the risk of injury and maybe falling down draft boards with all this stock rising for him. He doesn't want to lose any of it, uh, but it's an interesting decision nonetheless. Yeah, and someone who interviewed really, really well, according to a lot of different sources. So I think that's going to... Uh you know, boost him. So overall, a very positive combine for JJ McCarthy, just on the field, uh, I guess not super positive. I'd say on the field, he kind of stayed stagnant uh, in terms of his stock and that he just really boosted it uh, in those interviews, according to sources. Of course, I was not in the room for those. Anyway, moving to day four, uh, we've got the O-lineman. Always fun to talk about it. Really, really fun O-line class as well. Really, really athletic O-line class. And we'll get into it with the top guy, Joe Alt, offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. 6'9", Josh. Did you hear that? 6'9", 321 pounds. Um, he ran a 5'05", 40, which was eighth uh, in his position group. But then again, he is 6'9", um, 173, 7-yard uh, split. Yeah, I know. I, I got to say it over and over again. I'm so astounded by his performance. A 173, 10-yard split, fourth um, in his position group. 28-inch vert, 11th, broad jump, 9-foot four inches, which was eighth, his three cone drill, which of course these last two are the most important for O-linemen three cone. Uh, he had a seven, three, one, which was first in his group, 20 yard shuttle, which is probably the most important. I'd say it's specific O-line drill, uh, four, five, one, uh, was his score there, which was first in his group, historic combine performance for Joe. All he was already going to be a top eight pick at the latest. He's definitely going to be a top eight pick now. Definitely did not hurt himself. And uh, for someone who was so high up draft boards already, it was kind of surprising that he even participated in all these drills, to be completely honest. But yeah, really, really great performance from Joe Ault. And uh, he'll be going very, very high come April. All right. Another offensive lineman, Talizi Fuanga, offensive tackle, Oregon State, six foot six, 324 pounds. 40 yard dash and 10 yard split was not did not crack the top 10 for offensive linemen, but a 5.13 second uh, 40 yard dash, which is probably faster than what Alex and I could run. So congrats to Fawanga there. Uh, his vertical jump and broad jump, though, were within the top 10 and a 32 inch vertical jump, a nine foot three broad jump. So obviously another tall and you know big player. Alex, you're talking about a player who is within or surpasses six foot five he's at six foot six so fuanga a very big guy physicality and aggression shows in his combine results obviously we'll have to see what happens with the with the uh 40 yard dash and 10 yard split maybe not a guy who you want to involve in uh some blocking during screen passes or outside runs or maybe tosses because i don't know how quickly he'll be able you know to uh set the edge uh, for for blocking those defensive linemen. But we go from Falanga to the next offensive tackle on the list. Yeah, moving to Amarius Mims, offensive tackle out of Georgia, 6'8", 340 pounds. Um, there was some controversy with him, Josh. I don't know if you saw this because he did the – so they said he did a 4-3-3 uh, 20-yard shuttle, I believe it was. And everyone was going crazy because that's a crazy score, right? Joe All, I believe, got a 4-5-1, which is already insane. But 4-3-3, I think that's like record-breaking uh, for that drill. And then we found out that they messed up the data and he did not actually participate in that drill at all. So a little bit of interesting um, tidbit there in case anyone's interested. Or they saw that and they're like, why are you mentioning that he got a 4-3-3? That was not real. Um, that was all, um, I guess, an error of course, I'm sure Mims really wishes that they didn't uh, fix that or uh, whatever that may be because then he would look really good, but he did not actually participate in that drill. But he did participate in these drills. 40-yard dash, 5.07, which was ninth. 178, 10-yard uh, split, which was tied 18th. Vertical jump, which was 25 and a half, which was 17th. And broad jump, uh, which was 9 foot 3 inches, which was tied ninth. Here's the thing. With these O-linemen, all these scores... The, the range from these kind of 40-yard dashes, they're all within like 0.1. <laughs> um, so like 5.07, 5.05, 5.09, like it, it's very, very similar. So even though the, um, the I guess the ranking doesn't seem as good, it's more like the tiers 
um, for these O linemen. So that's something to keep in mind. And someone at his size, 340 pounds, running almost sub five of uh, 40 is pretty pre- uh, pretty impressive considering his size. Um, and he's someone who um, definitely been rising up draft boards uh, with his you know physical play at uh, Georgia. Someone who you know has been pretty good um, technique wise, despite just being a guy who could overpower people as well. Um, so we're going to have to see where he ends up uh, in this year's draft, but another guy who's very, very big could be worrisome in terms of potential injuries, as well as we saw with Makai Becton, um, you know, a few years ago. Our final player in this 2024 NFL draft scouting combine recap, Taylor Borden, uh, Bordellini, excuse me, center of Wisconsin. Do you think he's four, Italian, Josh, or what do you think? I, I would believe so. Uh, six foot four, <laughs> 303 pounds. The center in his combine was first in the 40 yard dash out of the centers, uh, 4.94, 1.69, 10 yard split. That was second. The vert jump, everything in the top five, by the way. The vert jump was third, 32 and a half inches, nine foot four, broad jump came second. Bordellini showcases that he's flexible at his center and guard split positions, by the way, so he can do either of those for a team. Uh, That's a pretty good thing to have, and it's a good skill to attribute when you're sitting down for interviews at the NFL Combine with all of these these coaches and and scouting staff and all of that. Go ahead, Alex. You're I was just gonna say I, I read this I read this last night as I was going to bed, funny enough. Um, he actually has played all five spots at Wisconsin. So he's played left tackle, left guard, center, right guard, and right tackle. Uh, so that's another thing that he could really boast at the combine. I don't know where his position is actually gonna be in the NFL, probably center or guard, but um very cool that he's played all four spots. And we know that the NFL likes versatility. So Obviously, good for him, good for Bordellini, and good for all of these players in this year's NFL Combine. And that's going to do it for our 2024 NFL Scouting Combine recap.